Pharmacy, 12871 East Jefferson, located inside the Park Medical Center. King Pharmacy has professional services, senior discounts, prescription counseling. King Pharmacy is here to serve all your prescription needs. For more information, call 313-331-8484. That's 313-331-8484. King Pharmacy, 12871 East Jefferson, located inside the Park Medical Center. Okay, ha, ah, there we go. I can hear it now. Hi, it is a good day. Any day above ground, better than none at all, y'all. Y'all know it's a good day. And it's a good day when we keep our history alive, be it through photographs, be it through telling the story. Y'all remember the days we used to sit on the porch and, and tell the stories and pass it from one generation to the next generation? What are you doing to keep your story alive or your your next generation knowing, your grandchildren knowing, your great-grandchildren knowing what your story is, what your history is, let alone the history of those in Detroit and how wonderful and exciting it was back in the day. Well, today we're going to talk about that as well as talk about the visuality of how we need to keep our photographs going as well in terms of making sure that we got pictures. And I'm not talking about, I don't understand those pictures people get from obituaries. I don't know why y'all collect them. Maybe it's just me. But help me understand. What do you keep them for? I mean, I really don't want to see anybody in a casket. Even those pictures that people take. I remember my mom and them used to take pictures of the person in the casket. Help me somebody understand that. But before we get started today with our special guest and keep the, the, the movement of going on with what's going on in this community, we want to let you know that we're going to do some trivia questions. $50 check can get your hands, get in your hands if you can answer the question. So stay tuned. Know that the number to call is 313-868-4336. 313-868-4336. We'll have trivia questions later. Right now, I'd like to say hello and give my love to my brother JJ and Bernice Barnes, whose uh, son just passed. We call him Buster. He'll be truly, truly missed. Such a sweet, sweet spirit. We love you and we're praying with you, JJ and Bernice and the family. And the funeral is going to be Thursday, this Thursday, at St. Paul AME on the east side. 
And I dare not try and say what street that is right now. I'll come back and tell you later. I know it's Hunter, but I'm trying to think of that main street. Shane. Shane and Hunter. So we'd love for you to join us there. 10 o'clock is family hour. 11 o'clock is a funeral. In the meantime, let me say hello and congratulations to Beth Griffith. Our girl was entertaining at the MA at the NAM convention, which is the National Association of Merchants Conference. She was she did so well that they endorsed her from uh, Lewitt. Lee, am I saying it right? Lewitt. Lee, Lewitt audio microphones. You go, Miss Beth. We love you, and we know you're going to keep on doing greater and better things. And we'd like to say hello to the member, to keep the member of, of uh, the contours in prayer, Gary Greer. Please keep him in, in your prayers. He was in a serious car accident, and he's in the hospital. We love you, Gary. Hope you're watching us. We know that God is going to mend up everything about you. He always makes the crooked straight. Whatever that is, he takes care of it. Remember that. And then, let me see, did I miss anybody else? I don't think I missed anything. Before we get started, which is usually we do at the end of the show, let me say thank you to the young lady who keeps our makeup looking good, our hair looking good, and everything looking good, Miss uh, Rochelle Jamil. <laughs> if you want to do the same, give her a call, 313-863-1930. 313-863-1930. I got it right that time, y'all. Well, I'm excited about this show, and I want to keep on moving. So let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah. Everybody, it's a good day. You got that number down? 313-868-4336. 313-868-4336. And remember that the numbers are running at the bottom of the screen. Anytime you want to give us a call, we'd love to hear from you. Just to say hello, that would be a good thing. All right. Now, as we move along, today we're trying to make sure we keep our history alive. And we're doing it in one way of doing pictures, collecting pictures and making sure we do photographs and all that good stuff. Are you out there doing that? Or you just, you know, I mean, nowadays, I mean, the cell phone, you can take pictures with everything. Everything you see on Facebook most of the times is somebody taking it from a cell phone. So don't let the moments go by. I love getting pictures of my great-grand and seeing her progress and being, you know, as she gets older. That is so wonderful as a grand, as a great-grandma, not grandma, hello, somebody. And I'm, I'm excited about having those pictures, but I'm also excited about showing her my pictures and especially my 40th, listen to me, my 40th, <laughs> <laughs> my 40th birthday celebration. All right, Orthea, did you go back or what? 
Y'all know how old I am. But anyway, I'll be 7 old this year, and we're going to do another celebration. But last year, we had a wonderful celebration with all the entertainers and musicians. Gave me an honor that was outstanding. And they had this man come and do my pictures. He was phenomenal. And I said, oh, my God. And I just got the video the other day. And I tell you, it is so awesome and until I was crying in one room. I sent it to my husband. And he was crying in the other room. So now you know that's some good work. And the young man that did that work and is still doing great things, he's sitting here with me. Stafford, right? It must, that's, did that's I say it right that time? Yes. Stafford, how are you? Fine, and yourself? Good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate me. it. So now, the arts of... Photography, because a lot of people don't look at it as an art form, but it is. Yes. And I thank you. How long ago did you get invested into doing the art? Because I understand you were in music first. Yes, probably maybe in the late 70s. I really became interested in photography. I was playing guitar at the time, trying to be the next Jimi Hendrix. That didn't quite I work out. I love that. <laughs> that didn't quite work out. However, okay. the um, photography gives you an opportunity to capture with your soul the essence of the moment that's mm -hmm. occurring around you. Right. So uh, as a matter of fact, speaking of your birthday, I would like to pre present you. I had the opportunity of being a photographer there. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you... Oh, my God. I love that one. You that was awesome. You were embraced by your husband, and you can see the essence of your emotion. I was just crying like a baby. I was so... I mean, just overwhelmed, y'all. Y'all know that. And if you look at your husband, you can see him looking down at you with so much compassion. That's and my love. baby. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm and so I know good. he's probably watching. Honey, I hope you see this. This is awesome. And he's presenting it to me. I will definitely frame that bad boy and make sure it's up in my house. Fantastic. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. All right, now, so... Let's go back to 17 years ago because you were also on the police force to understand. You've been a busy man. Yes, I joined the police department in 1978 and I just retired in 2012. Well, I know you don't miss that. Not a bit. All righty, <laughs> all righty. Some wonderful people along mm -hmm. the way, but uh, it's nice being your own boss. Now, somewhere along the line in your younger days, did you ever take pictures back then? You know, remember, I don't know how far you go back. See, I go back to Polaroid. <laughs> I go back to Polaroid, and I go back to film long before we had those magical little uh, cars, those memory cars to capture okay. this. We had right. to, I was actually processing my own black and white film in my bathroom. I had a little portable. Get out of here. Yeah. So it is, and what age were you then? I was in my 20s, early 20s. Okay. And with all this gray, I'm in my somewhere in my 50s now. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. And you went on to uh, go to college. Which college did you go to? Oh, I was like an academic gypsy. I went to mm -hmm. Detroit Institute of Technology, Central Michigan University, Eastern Michigan University. All righty. Uh, so, you know, just acquiring as much knowledge as I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And getting into the, the photography, was it, or just different? It was initially started out as engineering and then went to psychology. Okay. And ultimately my passion prevailed, which is photography. Mm -hmm. You know what? All that ends up together because you need all of that to be able to, to deal psychology, to deal with the clients that you have Absolutely. and knowing how to operate with them and seeing their mannerisms and what, you know, well, I know I can do this with them or no, I can't do this with them. Yes. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. You, you, you read, you discern your uh, client mm -hmm. and you, it helps to do a little research on them beforehand. Oh, okay. For example, uh, some of the people I shot recently, Kamora L. Simmons. My, uh, my. Stephen Smith from Sports Center. Before the photo shoot occurred, I actually went online, did some research, found out what their interests were, mm -hmm. and looked at how they had been photographed over a period of time. Okay. Which, what accentuated them the most and what shots were probably not the most flattering. So, so that you won't do the same. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. So now, what are you hoping to do with this this gift that you got in terms of passing it on because I'm always interested in passing on the legacy. I want it to grow and one of the things I want to do is get my children involved because I look at other businesses they develop and cultivate their children to be business owners as opposed right. to job holders. <coughs> so it's a matter of uh, just serving now myself. Now is that your son you said? Daughter. Your daughter. Daughter and son. <coughs> How old is she? 
She is 33. <laughs> he is 22. Okay. Has she picked up the camera at all? Yes, yeah, she's been with me on some events. We uh, have photographed church services, mm -hmm. uh, installments of ministers. Now, I'm going to tell you what's there. interesting about this conversation right here. I just got an email came across my desk from uh, the people that do Bravo and do PBS. They are looking for a reality show of a African-American business owner who's passing it on to their, to their generation, to the next wow. generation. Hello. That is fantastic. Hello. <laughs> that is so we need to talk fantastic. about that, all Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Because that's going to be some big money. Yes, indeed. All righty? Yes, indeed. So we make sure that we do that. And for those of you out there that have such a legacy going and you think that you can do a reality show, y'all know how much money they make on reality shows? Hello, somebody. If you know anybody that fits that, that uh, criteria, give me a call at 313-821-321. 3612 313-821-3612 because it's recommendation only that they're considering you all right so now i'm glad to hear that she will be carrying it on for you absolutely has she done any work with you has two of you done work together yes uh, going to various churches uh, churches collection. okay I was on the campaign trail with a couple of candidates for city council, Roy McAllister, mm -hmm. John Bennett. So she had the opportunity to, to follow me and capture the essence of people trying to serve the community. And that's what led you to your book that you're talking about doing, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is called? Caught Up in the Praise. I <laughs> love that. Caught Up in the Praise. Yes, indeed. Which shows them doing what? Uh, when we go to churches, you catch the actual ambience mm -hmm. of the spirit falling on people. The the tears, the sweating, the garments soaked in sweat. I love it. I love it. The prone. And mm -hmm. uh, even when I view the pictures now, sometimes I actually tear up because I can relive that moment mm -hmm. where a person was so embraced by the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And to be there to actually capture that was more than an honor. Phenomenal, like phenomenal. Yes. Now, being a photographer, have you... In the past years, have you ever been able to hold on to any photographs from your past? Yes, and that was a challenge in one respect. Okay. Uh, there's a photograph I have of my family mm -hmm. taken many years ago, and half of the individuals that were in that photograph are no longer here. Okay. So one of the things I did was people who were challenged with perhaps the potential loss of a loved one, mm -hmm. at no charge, no publication, I was capturing some of their final years or moments with their loved ones wow. so they could preserve them. And it wasn't for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. It was really just embracing the families them. to have something yes, yes. to remember them by. Absolutely. Okay. That is totally awesome. Thank you. Now, was there anybody else in your family that did photography or it was just something that was in, in, in gifted in you? It started with me. Okay. Yeah, I think Very it's the, that spiritual gift of discernment where Sometimes you can just feel things. Mm -hmm. and Because uh, you definitely have a passion for this. Absolutely. There's no doubt absolutely. about that. Absolutely. And, you know, being creative, because, see, it's one thing to, to just take a picture, but be creative with it is another thing. Yes, indeed. You know, and that is something that is just innate. It's not something that you can learn, I don't think. I don't think so either. And that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons I don't use a lot of Photoshop and photo editing software, mm -hmm. I think you need to get it right in the camera to really capture the spirit of that moment. Okay. Now, the piece that I got, it's more like a video kind of a, a piece. So now, I don't know how you put that together. Uh, that was my wonderful friend, Giselle. Okay. She has been a godsend. <laughs> okay, G, that's my baby, y'all. My producer who helped him put it together. No. Oh, you did it. You picking the pictures that he did and made it. Wow, she didn't tell me that. No. <laughs> I'm going with her little legs. And I didn't want to commit larceny <laughs> taking some, <laughs> of, some <laughs> of the credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweetie. Well, you did an absolutely fabulous job. I'm looking at the time that we can actually show it on the show. We'll do that. All right, and we'll have you come back and talk about it. Fantastic. And how you put it all together. Yes, indeed. Okay? So now that you're doing photography, you did the music, went to school, went to college, what is it that you haven't done? You have a bucket list? You know, I'm just enjoying every day that 
the good father presents every okay. opportunity that he makes available and just trying to extract the most i possibly can out of it mm -hmm. represent myself well my mom single mom who just sacrificed so much mm. for me to go through college and have and arrive at the status I am today. It's always God first, mom second, uh, and hello. everything else is is working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any any siblings? Two sisters. Okay. And one of my sisters is interested in coming into the business. And, All righty. Uh, so you know it's uh, going to be a see that show sounds better and better. Yeah, like Slash Stone. That reality show is going to sound better and better. <laughs> Absolutely. Sister coming in, daughter coming in. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. That's awesome. And what is the last name, Sapper? Uh, Stafford, S T. Oh, it is the last name, mm -hmm. Stafford. Staff, S T A. -F -F so, what's your first name? Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hello. That was my daddy's name, Leroy. Commonly known as Lee. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And what high school are you from? Detroit. Yes, I am. High school. Finney High School. Finney High School. Yes, indeed. Anybody out there from Finney High School? Hmm. I know some of y'all out there. Give them a call. I don't know. I don't want to say what year you graduated. I want, well, we're, you already told us you're in the 50s, so hello. 1975. <laughs> oh, you're just a kid. With gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. He said that early. I'm a kid with gray hair. <laughs> That's wonderful. That yes. is wonderful. So now you said your bucket list, you haven't really decided on what you want to do other than continue the photography. Yes, and really just be a man that daily God can look at and say, I'm pleased. Amen. Yeah. Because you really want to give back to the community as well. Yes. He is looking at doing some mentoring for our young people because truly all our young people will not be able to do a nine to five. You know how that is. You can't even do a nine to five anymore like you used to. So they need to know that they can be entrepreneurs in all forms of what is available to them. How about photography? You just never know. I don't know how lucrative that is, but it's enough to take care of a family, I believe. It certainly is. Amen, somebody. So, and, it's, and it's legal. Very. You know, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble with that thing. So that's really awesome. Really awesome. So now, you, how do you find your people for taking uh, pictures? You just go by those that call you or word of mouth, or how do we do this? A lot of that word of mouth with the Ajima group, they've... Uh providing me some wonderful opportunities and we're discussing they're keeping me on board for next year they all right Kamora can't last miss year. that can't miss that oh no 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 they had Kamora last year and uh mm -hmm. Stephen Smith a couple of weeks ago and uh, they're pleased and I try to give individuals much more than what they pay for you know all uh, right just to so they're pleased very pleased so now how does one get in touch with you if they wanted to hire you oh there's a couple of ways my telephone okay. number is area code 313 mm -hmm. 510 5676 i have a website passion the word i passion i photos dot com or Facebook. Is that like the letter I? No, uh, the not, word I. Not the word I, E-Y-E. Yeah. E -E. That's correct. Do Passion I know how to spell I? <laughs> <laughs> PassionatePhotos.com. Okay. And that's under reconstruction. I'm going to make the site much more elaborate, and mm -hmm. there are going to be videos and probably a more than ample amount of photographs of yourself on there. I appreciate it. Now, how do you do, uh, in terms of, of video, are you looking at doing Cam, I mean, it, it's camera work, but it's not photogenic. It's not the photo kind, is it? No, this is still photography. However, I'm starting to endeavor more into video. Okay. And that's going to be reflected on the new website, which hopefully will be up next week. It's mm -hmm. a lot more, it's a lot more elaborate and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Let me ask you this question. How do you feel about people, you know, nowadays you can use the iPad, you can use the cell phone. You can use anything really to take a picture. You can get, you know, it started off with those uh, uh, flash things you get in the store and the pharmacy and throw it away. Right. How do you feel about that? You can capture, <clears throat> one of the things I look at, you can have a $5,000 camera or you mm -hmm. can have a small camera phone. It's, it's the ability, it's what your soul feels, what your eye is perceiving. Right. However, in those cameras, you cannot do in those cameras what you can do in a professional grade 35 millimeter right and uh the, the and the the uh creativeness or the spirit that comes across because i had a young lady that did our engagement party years ago in the summer 
And it wasn't that she was just so awesome of a photographer. It was that she could capture the spirits in the moment. And, you know, that made you look at the picture and go, oh, my God, you know. So I appreciate that kind of art form because that's truly what it is. It is an art form. A lot of people don't look at it as an art form. You know, it's a job, true. You know, and I want to, I imagine we want to be recognized for our art form. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't want to recognize what your art form is. They think it's just a hobby. Exactly, Hmm? exactly. Right? And I don't know about your parents, but I remember back in the day, my mom and dad, they supported me. But some of my friends that were in the arts, their parents didn't support them because they were like, this is not a job. You need to go get a job. Yes. You know, a nine to five job. Not all the time does that need to happen. I think if you let your child be who they are creatively, they will be able to excel more ways than you think they can. I agree. Well, I appreciate you being with me today. And I appreciate the photos, and thank you for the presentation. Absolutely. Looking forward to working with you again and being a part of the mentorship program that we're looking at for, the, for Vera Smith. We've we got another recruit here. So don't go away. Stick around. We'll be right back because we'll continue talking about our history and keeping it alive. Be right back. Hey, hey, we are back and we are hot. I love that when we say we're hot because we are. I'm excited today to have a young man with me that has not been with me in a year. He reminded me of that. It's been a year, uh, Martin Luther King birthday, that Ken Coleman was here talking about our Detroit black history. Now, what we're going to do before we get started, I want you to write this number down because we're giving away $50 if you can do some trivia and answer a few questions. And I'm gonna let him decide what those questions might be. Or if you got a story that we don't know that may not be in his book that has happened as far as African-American history in Detroit. 313-868-4336. 313-868-4336. Welcome again, Ken. How oh. you doing? Give me a hug, I missed you. Oh. Good to be mm. back. Good to be back. It was, uh, it's been about a year. And we talked about the book at the end of the show. We talked about the book. I talked about the fact that I was putting the final touches on it right. and that I wanted to come back uh, when it was done. And it is here. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Hold that book up All and right. tell us what the title says. Well, the book is called On This Day, African American Life in Detroit. All righty, all righty. Yeah. Now, how difficult was it to piece all this together? Because... It ain't no joke. Well, it uh, first of all, thanks for having me again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. It, okay. I, I, I like to look at it as labor of love, but I will okay. say that it is labor intensive. It mm-hmm. did take, you know, does take uh, a lot of time to do the research. Um, some of it, you know, we had put together over the years. Of course, you know, mm-hmm. I've been a newspaper reporter and 
done some talk shows over the years and you know was able to um, amass a lot of the information but then I literally had to uh, kind of go into camp if you will and for about six or seven months maybe eight months uh, lots of time in the library lots of time going through old Michigan Chronicles and oh my, and, okay. and, and old Chicago Defenders and, and old Pittsburgh Couriers and were there and any people stuff, advisors yeah. that could help you no, I really took it on as a project of my own. It, it's a self-published work, um, so I didn't have the uh, the didn't have the luxury of having a research team, if you will. Okay. But but in a way, uh, Orthea, that that made made the work all the sweeter because every entry, all fourteen hundred of them, woo um, Man, fourteen hundred entries over three hundred and sixty-five days. All of them have been uh, you know researched, and you know some of them are. Uh, uh, facts that we all know mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of them are facts that we may not know but they're all special what made you decide to do this yeah well you know uh, I started out as a newspaper reporter mm -hmm. uh, it's been uh, been in the business almost 25 years now it's amazing but um, started out uh, at the old WQBH Martha Jean the Queens radio station Wow okay started out producing talk shows there mm -hmm. uh, 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 V Lonnie Peak was doing a morning show at the oh time. yeah yeah it was Lonnie's morning show producer so uh, did you journal all this yeah I mean it part of being you know part of being a uh, First in broadcasting and in print, you know, you're always, you know, even in those days, the early days of computers, you're always sort of, sort of storing information, right? right? Uh, and then, you know, I've gone on to the, went on to the Michigan Chronicle, and then there were stories that were published. But you mm -hmm. know, you try to keep your work. Uh, back in those days, it was just newspaper clips. Now everything is electronic, and you can store mm -hmm. it on a, on a flash drive. Gene Elsey, was he around mm -hmm. with you then? Yeah, I caught the very end of Gene Elsey's career. Uh, in fact, uh, Gene was uh, actually at uh, uh, WDET. Okay. Uh, he, right. he and Ernie Durham. Um, uh, Ernie. I didn't know Ernie Durham was there the, as well. The last couple years of Ernie's life, um, mm. Ernie did a, a Saturday night show on WDT. There are a couple Ernie Durham entries in there, but Ernie, Ernie, if you remember, passed in '92. Mm -hmm. uh, he had been at the at WDT for a year or two. Uh, okay. Gene Elsey did uh, did that broadcast for a little while. Now Jay Butler's doing it. One of my colleagues at WDT. Wow. Okay. I didn't know he had taken over WDT. Mm -hmm. uh, many years, you know, years out of lapse, but essentially mm -hmm. a Saturday night program um, playing playing great great old R and B mm -hmm. and 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 Jay with, with blues and 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 Gene with jazz. So now, how did you find the pictures to go along with mm -hmm. your? That was the, the wording. Well, that was the most challenging part, Orthea, uh, mm -hmm. because a, as you might as you might recall, you know, you, you've been um, a performer, a professional performer, and you know that oftentimes the, the, the rights to photos are owned by a record company or owned right. by an individual. And, you know, or the they didn't take them. Or they didn't take them, mm -hmm. right. So there, there are all types of copyright uh, issues you can get into. Oh, wow. We, we were fortunate enough, though, through the uh, uh, Burton Historical Collection at the Detroit Public Library okay. and the Walter Ruther Collection at the Wayne State Library both uh, both institutions have lots of great photos. That's not the same as the Hadley or Hagley or whatever. Uh, 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 Azalea Hackley mm -hmm. is at uh, the Detroit Public Library. Okay. But the Hackley collection is essentially books and music. Oh, okay. um, uh, some photos, but 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 mainly it's it's books dedicated to music. Mm -hmm. uh, it's some memorabilia, not necessarily photos. But the Burton collection um, is where a lot of the books are. And, okay. Uh, and, and they have a photo archive. So our book on this day, African American Life in Detroit, has about 22 pages of photos um, throughout uh, and it really spans I mean some of the early photos are um, uh, Bethel AME uh, Church in the, in the wow, 1840s. Wow that's historic that's historic yeah. right there people um, a lot of people don't know yeah. how historic that is. On through uh, Nat Morris and the scene in fact I was talking My about goodness <laughs> Nat Morris and yeah, the scene. A photo of Nat Morris. I know Henry remembers that in RJ. Yeah uh, yeah it was they talking, were all around together then. Was, was talking to those gentlemen about just that uh, mm -hmm. and uh, some other projects you know some similar projects but one of the things I try to do with or, or Thea is not not have it be just a political book. I mean, you know, right. you know me. I'm heavily involved in politics. Right. I just didn't want it to be a political history book. Or, so we got or music, sports, we got music, sports, sports, we got religion, art, religion, art, everything. I mean, I, what what I try to do in the 170 pages and on, mm -hmm. and on this day is is give if, if someone got dropped down on this planet or or came uh, or, or visited Detroit for the first time, if they didn't know anything about black folk in Detroit. 
what what I believe this book is a, is a good representation of uh, our Preparing more than two hundred years. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and, it's and done, letting them know it's a primer, right? I mean, the, right. the entries are are you know sixty or eighty words long. It's not a dissertation. It's mm-hmm. not it's not designed to be chapter and verse. It is designed to to be a primer and be representative. I think. Uh, so did you have a format time. of doing the pictures first or the wording first? Uh, the wording first. I mean, okay. I, and probably because I'm a writer, I, the prose is what <laughs> right. I what I kind of gravitated to. But I, but I also realized too that you cannot, you know, you cannot put together a a, a book of history. I mean, the expectation in doing that is that you're going to have some photos. Okay. And so one of the really one of the classic photos that I'm I'm really proud of is a photo that's on the cover. Uh, and it uh, it is a photo. Is that the walk? It is the walk. Martin the, Luther King the, the walk. The, the 1963 walk. walk. And mm-hmm. yeah, as you recall, as we talked about earlier in the segment, um, we we published the book in early 2013, uh, and I wanted to do that for a couple different reasons. One. Uh, we knew that the 50th anniversary of the walk, the mm-hmm. 1963 walk, was coming it's up. coming up. Mm-hmm. But there were also some other important uh, uh, anniversaries. Uh, another one um, for last year was the 40th anniversary of, of, of uh, Coleman Young's uh, first election as mayor. Wow. Uh, okay. You know, okay. That's some history. 50 years since uh, Malcolm X's message to the grassroots, where he first did here in Detroit mm. um, before it went on to be a very popular speech uh, and, and carried out in other cities. He first gave, first delivered it here in Detroit. Talk to us a little bit about Black Bottom yeah. well, and Black how important that was to our community. Absolutely. Black Bottom is a... Is a, a is that the, isn't that the same as Paradise Valley? Is there, that? There, are some, there are some differences and some similarities. Okay. I, this, the way I try to answer it is mm-hmm. this way. Uh, Black Bottom was more or less the residential community okay. uh, where black people lived. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and we're talking uh, really the 1920s through maybe the 50s, um, early 60s. Um, named Black Bottom not because black people lived there. It had, it had really sort of had that name even before black folks became the com- mm. uh, came here from the South. Okay. It was called Black Bottom because of the fertile topsoil. Uh, mm. in, in that land. If you think about the area, everything east of the Chrysler Freeway, all okay. the way over to maybe like Shane or Mount Elliott, mm-hmm. that was a community. There were farmers, the European farmers. Um, wow, I Germ- did not know yeah, that. Germans, Polish, they were farmers there in the uh, 18th century. Okay. Uh, they began to move uh, to other parts of the city. Uh, black folks came up here. Um, began so we had to start that kind of soil time. going on. Yeah, it, it, I, I, wow. I live in that, I live in that community now, and it's it's interesting. I I grew up on the northwest side, and it's funny. Me and my wife off, often joke about this. We grew up on the northwest side, and and the squirrels mm-hmm. that we see they they'd be you know brown or or beige color, not brown color. Mm-hmm. Uh, down in the lower east side, they're all black. Right. <laughs> 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 so it must have been must, must digging is. in the soil, but uh, <laughs> but but uh, but it is very um, it's a. I, you know, I try to talk when I talk about Black Bottom, I really get excited about mm-hmm. it. I, you know, it, it is Black Bottom and known for that rich topsoil. But but Black Bottom also came began to be rich in black history. OK, so how does school. it connect or does it? You said it didn't connect yes. with Paradise Valley. So or it does. so, so uh, only 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 in the sense that in, cl- in the classic sense, um, Black Bottom and Paradise Valley are divided by Gratiot. So if you okay. think of everything south of Gratiot, mm-hmm. um, that's Black Bottom traditionally. If okay. you think of uh, the first few blocks north of Gratiot up to Old Verner Highway on, on St. Antoine and Old Hastings, the new, where the freeway is, okay. and John R., that was the area known as Paradise Valley, and that was the commercial district. That's but where they're the trying to up. say that uh, right down there by Virgil Carr, mm-hmm. that is Paradise Valley mm-hmm. area. Well, it technically, uh, technically in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, that, w- that wouldn't have been Paradise Valley. I think what, uh, and, I, and I give... Uh, former councilwoman um, uh, Joanne Watson, Joanne Watson, mm-hmm. and and uh, Barbara Rose Collins, because Barbara Rose Collins was was, was, her, there, was yeah. responsible too. Mm-hmm. I think what they wanted to do was to find uh, to to identify an area that was close um, and preserve that mm-hmm. history. Now there are some institutions um, that 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 stood for a great long time that were. Um, institutions where, where, where blacks either owned or managed businesses south okay. of Gratiot. But for the most part, 
Uh, and we had a lot of businesses back then. Oh, in the day. yeah. I mean, it uh, certainly by the 30s or 40s, uh, a lot of Hastings was lined with black businesses, certainly at St. Antoine, uh, mm-hmm. from Gratiot up to ultimately uh, Warren and the Boulevard. Until they bought in that expressway. Until they brought in that expressway. Sonny, Sonny and Wilson I think that was politically was done. Yeah. And, and you know, it, make the divide, make them have to. Yeah. scatter and try and find places to go and live yeah and, and that's what happened people you know lots of people lived on top of storefronts you know uh they they you know they might right. have lived above above a a uh, a a, a, a barber shop or, or cleaners super, or cleaners or supermarket mm-hmm. so when you take out the commercial strip of hastings um you also take out part of the residential community uh, put it this way uh if, if you think about it sydney barthwell by the 1940s owned 13 um, uh, is that the same Barthwells that are around today? Mm-hmm. His son is a uh, 36th District Court magistrate. Okay, so sitting, now Barthwell, sitting, are we son. thinking of the same one that has a business up in some part of Detroit, not Detroit, but Michigan? No, I don't think that the family, um, that might be a different Barthwell. Okay. Barthwell. I don't think they own any businesses anymore. But but Sidney Barthwell began, uh, opened up a couple shops during the Great Depression on Hastings. Mm. So when the Chrysler Freeway takes out Hastings Street beginning in 1959 and mm-hmm. opens in 1964, Sidney Barthwell has to move two of his uh, more profitable um, drug stores and, and ice cream parlors. Okay. Uh, that he's just that's one why the example. name sounds familiar to mm-hmm. me then. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking you, of someone you, else You too. certainly, you, I mean. Uh, well, I came that, up where along, yeah. along that time. Yeah. He was and, there. Sonny uh, Wilson was where there. Was, where was the Flame Show Bar? Flame Show Bar was on John R. Uh, John R. at Canfield. Okay. And the interesting thing about the Flame Show Bar, now the Flame Show Bar opens in 1949. Mm. Um, technically, uh, histori- real Paradise Valley historians will tell you that, that the Flame and the Gotham Hotel right. and, and even, and even um, Sonny Wilson's Forest Club right. weren't technically in Paradise Valley. Mm. Um, the, the real historians tell you really it was only three or four blocks and didn't go north of, of uh, Verner Highway. Now see, I used to go to Sonny's, um, mm-hmm. uh, Sonny, you Sonny, probably, what do you call it? Sonny had a couple places. Now he had the Forest Club. The Forest Club. He went to the, yeah, he had the Forest Club in the Because uh, my the dad was singing in a quartet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he used to have the quartet Singers come there and do yeah. their, their their shows there. Sonny Sonny had a uh, you 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 were too young you you weren't you weren't at this <laughs> part of the place. Sonny had a one hundred and seven foot bar which was thought to believe it was thought to be the longest bar, um, c- c- contiguous bar in the country. One hundred and seven. Get out of here! No, probably, I wasn't there. Probably yet. here all the way over. The I don't remember years. that year. But it also <laughs> had. But but you might but you might remember though. Um, that it had a a roller skating rink and it had a bowling wow. alley. And before Sonny Wilson bought it in 1941, it was mm-hmm. a, an indoor amusement park. <laughs> Imagine that. Get out of here. In, in the 20s, it was Jewish owned at the time. Uh, okay. And, and it was the, at, at the, it was a, there was a concept of an indoor amusement park, mm-hmm. and they didn't have Cedar Point and or even you know Bob Lowe was open, but it was you know, sort of a different. Now you know, thing. back in those days, we were a proud people. To be sure. I'm wondering, have we lost that that feeling or that ideology that we are still that people? Well, I, I go back to Sidney Barthwell again. Sidney Barthwell told the Detroit Free Press in the 1980s uh, as his stores were closing that integration was the worst thing that ever happened to the black That's businessman. It. Oh, yeah. He, he felt that way because, you know, I, we, we just talked about the story about Chrysler, the Chrysler Freeway taking mm-hmm. out two of his stores. Right. But as in, integration or desegregation the the ability for black folks to move to to uh, northwest detroit and, and to live the better birds. yeah mm-hmm. um I, supposedly I, yeah, I would argue that we <laughs> lost some of that kind of new oh yeah yeah uh, we did i believe so as well and when 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 the kids that lived in black bottom were forced almost de facto to go to miller it it built to create it built a community in miller an incubator where black and white teachers and administrators wrapped their arms around those young people mm-hmm. uh, and they went on to do great things mm-hmm. um, and sports. Now see, I was things. raised up in that area. I was raised, mm-hmm. up, I went to Bishop, mm-hmm. Bishop School. Bishop I don't school. know if you remember. Yeah, I, know, I know where back it is. Back in the area. It was mm-hmm. on the other side of, of the freeway of Hastings, right been. off Hastings. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bishop, Lincoln, um, Leland School. Elementary the, school, y'all. Some uh, yeah. of y'all remember that or not. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, I went Trowbridge, to school with you, uh, uh, Diana Ross. Okay, very good. And Diana, mm-hmm. Diana uh, went on. Uh, grew up in part in the Brewsters, mm-hmm. uh, and then went went on. You you both went to Cass, right? Cass Tech. Cass Tech. CT. Oh yeah. There's a couple Orthea Barnes entries in here, by the way. Get out of here. 
Are you serious? <laughs> one when you got, I did not know that. One when you and Reverend Bob got married and get out of here. I ain't gonna tell the year, but the but the day you were born. <laughs> and you know what? When you say I'm not gonna something. tell the year, I, I can hear my husband laughing, saying, "She don't remember anyway." <laughs> But you know he what? always when someone say how long y'all been married he said ask her <laughs> she's not gonna she doesn't know it, it he always remembers it, it is it's usually uh, the woman right you know and it right right and, <laughs> and, and that is sort of system of, I, and you know people have sort of given me a hard time about putting the years that people were born but I I, I think it's important only from this sense I mean I, I don't know I mean and, and it's sort of I mean, it, it, it could be I think it's important it's important to because what I see also with your book mm-hmm. is not just for us as adults but for the generation coming that's, for your child that's that's what you know when that so, knows about our history so jackson you know jackson mm-hmm. pick jackson our five which is his old, son <laughs> yes he he picks up this book and 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 knows it like a book and and so i'm sitting at the computer and jackson is over off to the side and he comes to me and he show he shows me where he's made his own book his own little <laughs> i book. love and it. so it you know kids Kids are impressionable people, yes, and yes. they want to know and learn, and mm-hmm. and, and, and not you know and brought, be a part. Yeah, it brought tears to my eyes when he had his little uh, superhero uh, <laughs> <laughs> book <laughs> by you know by Jackson Coleman. And I, love so, it, so I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But we got now. You know what I want you to do mm-hmm. is that I want you to pick a good question out of that oh, book boy. Okay. that we can see if people know, okay. and if they can call in and win some money, we're gonna do that. We're gonna take a break, and we'll be right back. All right. You're watching UHF TV 33, Detroit Highland Park. The following program does not reflect the views and opinions of Channel 33, its management or sponsors. King Pharmacy, 12871 East Jefferson, located inside the Park Medical Center. King Pharmacy has professional services. Senior discounts, prescription counseling. King Pharmacy is here to serve all your prescription needs. For more information, call 313-331-8484. That's 313-331-8484. King Pharmacy, 12871 East Jefferson, located inside the Park Medical Center. And we are back, and we got a trivia question together. Did we get one, Ken? We do. And okay. No, no, no. Orthea said, "Come up with something that's not too easy." We want people to put on their thinking caps and right. sort, of, sort of think about it. But see how much history you know about there Detroit. We go. There we go. Here we go. I mean, you know, I'm a political guy, Orthea. So okay. I'm going to do, do a political question, but I Good. think it's one that uh, that hopefully some, uh, somebody out there in the listening audience can get. It goes like this: Who was the first? The first black woman to be elected to the Michigan Senate again. Whoa, that one's kind of hard. You know, city council, yeah. everybody could think, you know yeah, what I mean? City council would be the easy. Senate. The, fir- the first black woman elected to the Michigan Senate. Hmm. The first black woman elected to the Michigan Senate. If you know that, you can win $50. 313-868-4336. And I can use that every day. Of the week Hello, if you don't call, I'm going to take it home. Three one three eight six eight four three three six. Do you know? You know, but back to the book. I mean, one mm-hmm. of the things I tried to do. I've got a political background, but I wanted the book not to just be a political book, and, right. and not just to be a book about religion mm-hmm. or 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 art or music. I wanted to try to put together something that's representative 
um, of our entire uh, our entire experience here as African Americans in Detroit. The book has 1,400 entries every day of the year has at least one entry and some days have four or five or six entries. So okay. the way the book flows, you open it and up. And he also does first. that on Facebook. Now, yeah. mm-hmm. are you using the information from the book to put on Facebook now or it, something you've already collected well, over the years? You know, well, to be honest with you, a lot the, the, the idea to put it in book form came from Facebook, came okay. from social media. You know, I guess he was our historian the, 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 on the, Facebook and he yeah. is a historian on Facebook. Well, I'm continuing to do. I'm I'm, I'm trying to move books now, so okay. <laughs> I don't do it as much. <laughs> hey, you got to eat. But right. uh, no, but but it started out as a social media project for about four years now. I get up in the morning mm-hmm. and post uh, a couple things that happened on this day, right? And people would you know like the work and send me private messages and and say, hey, why don't you look into this? I think my uncle did that, or I think my mom did that. Uh, this and so th- and then also. People would also say, why don't you put it in a bound form? If mm-hmm. you put it in a book, it would be great sort of a gift for, you know, for people to give to others, share the history, the younger generation, as you mentioned, and for right. people that want to go back and be nostalgic and look at the days where their parents grew up or where they grew up. And so we put what it about, in a book. What about if you, uh, I don't know if you have an area where talk about nightclubs that mm-hmm. were owned by people. Yeah. yeah. What about... Um, the Nakarima Club. Do you remember that? Yep, yep. There's an entry in there. <laughs> well, it now it, that's a little bit dated. It, it is, but you know, part of what I, you know, part of I think our experience. I mean, we certainly have uh, been very successful in the entertainment industry. But what mm-hmm. I what I think is sort of really interesting and is important is a lot of the nightclub owners, if you will, were really community activists. True. Um, uh, you know, Sonny Wilson was not just a nightclub owner. No, I mean, he, he was a not. leading businessman yeah. in town. Mm-hmm. He was respected downtown before mm-hmm. there were blacks, you know, elected as uh, common council and mayors. Uh, he was the mayor of Paradise Valley. You know, the sort of unofficial moniker wow. that, that black I, folks had <laughs> because we couldn't get elected. You know, uh, uh, uh Charlie Diggs' dad, uh, Charlie Diggs Sr. Got, got elected to the Michigan Senate in 1936. Mm-hmm. Charlie Diggs got elected to the to to the uh, to to um to the United States or the Uni- United States House of Representatives in 1954. Okay. But we weren't elected. You know, we couldn't get elected oftentimes in the 20s and the 30s. Mm-hmm. So Su- Sonny Wilson was a leader in the community. Black folks in the community. Uh, uh, gave him the title and actually it turned into elections later in the 30s but gave him the title of the mayor of Paradise Valley uh, so we, we, we you know we love that you know we love to, to, to shake our to shake our thing and, and okay and we thing, must we have had too. something too hard because nobody's calling <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I'm doing easy one. let's get an easy let's one. do an easy one. Uh, oh, I, I, here's one I, I bet you the phones are live okay on. what year was Coleman Young first elected mayor of Detroit now that's easy. I can't get any easier than that. Three one three eight six eight four three three six. Give us the year. You can win fifty dollars. And if nobody calls in, I'll just take it because I <laughs> I, I got to put some I gas in the car. So <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, so give but, us a call if you know. But see if um, these phones light up. See if you know some of that that. Mayor Young history. Mayor, what year was Mayor Young first elected? And if you, you know, if you give us the year now, that he was elected and the year he took y'all office, be good because work. I don't remember <laughs> what year it was. Well, well, I'm gonna come up with a third question, but let's let's try that one. You know, I okay. think I, I think somebody will get that one. I'm, I I know I know that I know that we will. All righty. But but entertainment has been really important in our community. Uh, certainly. Now, as far as the churches, mm-hmm. yep. because uh, we had that certain areas where they had. Well known churches, mm-hmm. you know. I think it was like uh, Tabernacle over near Tabernacle, no West Side. Uh, Tireman and over mm-hmm. in that w- area. Yep. You know. Well, yeah. If you if you think about that old West Side you're, you're talking about, you had you had Tabernacle, mm-hmm. you had Hartford. Hartford. Now, remember before Hartford moved on Seven Mile yes. in the Lodge, they were they were on Hartford Street, right, uh, on the old West Side. Had Saint Stephen. As a matter of fact, uh, that's where the Nakarima Club. That, was that's over right. In the, there. It's the house is the house uh, still sits. It's a you know it's, it has a a na- uh, historic designation, mm-hmm. um, but it, it, it sits uh, sits on. Uh, Trying to, it's not on Hartford. I think it's the next street over, but on the old West Side, just south of uh, Tyreman, Scotton. And Scotton. that was our nightclub. That was a young social. People. It was a. It was a. It was. It young started people. out as a men's social club, mm-hmm. uh, but it was a social club with a purpose. I mean, it did not. You know, here it, we got a call. Oh, there we Let's go. See what's so going you, on. I told you we get somebody. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm calling the hope. 
Can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you. Okay. Turn um, your radio down. There you go. The TV. I'm calling to hopefully answer the question. And who is this calling? My name is Spanky. All right, Spanky. And the question is, when was Coleman Young elected officially? First election. The first election. What year was that? Okay, I'm guessing. Was it 1975? Close. Close. <laughs> now, it's going to be up to the judge, or Thea's the judge. Okay, that's close. close. Very close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold, take your information. If anybody else calls with it, then they got it. If they don't call, then you got it. All right. Okay, I'll be watching. All right. Keep my fingers on my toes. All right. She's very close. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you're thinking about the old West Side, but some of the churches, you know, some of our churches go back to the 1800s. Right. And Second Baptist Church. Wow, was, 1800s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The Second Baptist Church was founded and by the one downtown slaves. in yep. Greektown. Mm -hmm. Same same mm -hmm. site. Uh, building has changed. It's been um, been modern or modern or modern arised over the years. Right. But it was it was uh, founded in 1836. And how many of our young people know about the Underground Railroad in under the church there? <laughs> Well, I you know, I, there's a there's a there's a there's a famous reality TV show <laughs> that's on now and one of the, one of the one of the stars of the show thought that the underground railroad was actually a train. Oh, you know I saw. And and so and so but but the reason why that I bring it funny. up but it, it was but but it was also sad. And, it was. and 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 what and, and and so to answer your question, not, not as many, many as know. we should as, as should know. Right. And so uh, it 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 it's one of those things. That, again, the book and the discussion and the history is something I I, I say history lives because I think that it does, right. whether we know it or not. And we have to tell our story because history is not fair to us. There you go. Now, is there any way possible that you think of that this book could get into the school? Well, we're talking right now. It's, I'm glad you asked the question. I'm, okay. I'm working with a consultant now who we're putting it together. We got the another call. Let's oh, great, see who great. this is. Okay. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm fine. Who's calling? I'm, calling. I'm fine. What's your name? Billy. You say Billy or Tilly? Billy. 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 Okay. Billy. Great. All right, Billy. Do you know the answer? Uh, yes. He was elected in 1977. 19. I didn't catch the last part. 77. No, no. Unfortunately, not the right answer. That was that was actually he won election for the second time in 1977. But the, we're, we're looking for the first time he the first year, the first term that he served, the first time that he was elected. Yeah, Clo very close, but but uh, not quite the answer. Thank you. Though. Thank you, though, Thank you so much. Would you say, honey? In 1970, in 1975. That was the. Uh, that the was answer. the other answer. She answered that one already. May have a tie. Technically not the right answer, but very, very close. All righty. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Want we'll to try one more? All right. Somebody going to get it. Somebody, <laughs> anybody, anybody, anybody. If not, Coleman Young, we're going to go elected. back to the first young lady that got it. You need not be present to win. No, you do need to be <laughs> present to win. <laughs> I love you need it. need to be you present and correct. need to be present and correct <laughs> and calling. And calling. 313-868-4336. 868-4336. Right, the book is doing well. We're talking to a consultant now who's helping us put together um, – a, a curriculum, a companion piece that would go, there'll be a curriculum piece to go along with the book. Okay. Um, we're excited. We just started like doing a workbook or a workbook. Yes. Where you could, oh, lift up, right. you could lift the dates and the information and in a text that sort of mm -hmm. is a working text, workbook text to go That's along good. with it as a companion. So maybe this time next year in January, I'll Hello. come back and tell you we're in the Detroit public <laughs> schools. That would be my, my that my would dream. be totally awesome. That would be my dream. That would be totally awesome. Should I give the answer or should we? Should well, I? you know what? Gonna I'm going to let you get the answer, but I'm going to see if this young lady is still on here. Okay. Hello? I am. You still? There you go, girl. <laughs> I guess you say, I'm going to get this I one. I want it. I want it. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. And say your name again. I'm sorry. Spanky. Right. Spanky. I don't know how I forget that when I She's and my right. singer friend. Do you remember Spanky Wilson? <laughs> you don't know that, that <laughs> name, right? And tell yeah, how young you are. But I tell you, you won. She's the winner. So you hold on. Let me get your information, all right? <laughs> he was elected. For, uh, Coleman Young was first elected in 1973, in November 1973.
took office in 1973. 73, so she's the closest. That was very close. So hold on. We love y'all. Thank you for watching. See you next Monday. Thank you, honey, for being here. Thank you, dear. Love you. All right. Gone is that thick black cloud that used to mess up my day. No more sitting around having big parties all day. Just like two plus two equals four. I am here to stay so good to me. It's a good day. Trust in you.